Hey guys, today I'm going to be speaking with one of my very good friends. Her name is Aisha. That's her name, right? That's <laughs> You are rude. <laughs> but yeah, I was speaking with Aisha. Aisha is a content mar uh, marketing manager at Wiseline in Mexico. Um, she started her career uh, in Nigeria, then got a remote job, then moved to Mexico as a content market manager. So in this video, we're going to talk about how she landed her remote role and how Daru ended up relocating her. And I'm doing this video because I see a lot of people in tech who, who have successfully relocated, who are getting remote jobs, and people who are in marketing are still in the the smallest fraction of that number so you mostly see like developers and designers and product managers and I'm happy for them you but <laughs> I'm in marketing <laughs> and I honestly want to see more people who are digital marketers good marketers content marketers who are able to you know up their skills who are able to work for international companies and who are able to move country and Aisha is a perfect example of that so in this video if you are in the marketing industry regardless of what skill set social media content digital marketing performance marketing whatever and you either want to land an international remote role or even relocate with your job so your job relocates you then you should definitely watch this video as we learn from Aisha and her experience Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Okay, so hi, how you doing? Very good, very very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on holiday, so I'm I'm You're really vacationing. Showing. I'm vacationing. I'm having the time of my God life. When? Peace, oh please. my God, she's on vacation too, and I, I don't mean, know why we're I'm working own, right I'm now. I'm in my own country. I don't know why we're working right now. From another continent to another continent. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Lord Jesus, <laughs> tell us, tell us how about how you did it. But first, right, let's let's talk about just maybe give us like a brief history of what your career has been so far uh, before you, you know, move to Wiseline. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've been doing content marketing for the last five, well, we're in 2020 now, so let's say six years. Um, <laughs> and I started my career as a digital marketer, so I was really just experiencing and exploring all the different aspects of digital to marketing so from email marketing to ppc to content to all the different areas right yeah testing the waters and trying to see exactly where i f would find my interest and I, where, where i wanted to specialize and around four years ago i decided to do content marketing so like time. to your career yeah I decided to do content marketing full time and that means you know my career has really been full of working with like agencies mostly agencies at the beginning of my career and then um, I worked with the product company and then I worked with another product company so the most relevant one would probably be the second product company I worked with which is Carbon a lot of people probably know like Aisha from Carbon that was me it's um, not just a persona it was <laughs> <laughs> it was real I was writing those emails and that was really cool um, and at the time when I was ready to leave Carbon, it was a really pivotal time for me in my career because, um, you know, there were lots of conversations happening in the ecosystem. There were lots of offers from different places because I was, you know, ready for the next step. I have a cover. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I was ready for the next step. And so at that time, I had to really ask myself, like, what was important to me and what did I want to do next? And I realized that I wanted to test the waters with, you know, a job outside the country. So my initial, what I was looking for initially was just a remote job. Okay, something. Hold on, Todd. Yeah. Right. You said you started your career as a digital marketer. Mm -hmm. And in two, two years down the line, you begin. You to do more niche uh, what influenced choosing content marketing because I mean digital marketing is very wide mm -hmm. right but what influenced saying you know what I think I want to build a career as a content marketer to be honest I just enjoyed content marketing content marketing really made me happy I like to write I like to think of the strategy plan writing long term I like to tell stories that was it for me and content marketing allowed me to really do that it was you know connecting the brand or the business that I'm working for to the audiences through story storytelling and some of that even really involved like customer storytelling that was something I found very interesting and so for me content marketing was really a natural decision I didn't think too much about it I just I didn't I don't even think I remember making a decision I just found that I gravitated too much yeah, yeah towards that bucket of work more and then I just decided to 
I just focused. <laughs> I, just, I just did that. That makes sense. So you said when you were about to leave carbon and you had lots of offers because you're like, I share from carbon. Yeah. But like the, the key thing for you was looking for an international remote company. Absolutely. So how did you get about finding that? And how long did it take? What was the process like? Mm. How many did you, did, was it like the first one interview that was like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, or did it take a while? I wish. <laughs> um, so I think I'll just start by saying you'll be really amazed by what you can find when you look on the internet. Google is, is, that place is a minefield. Like, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was, I decided that, okay, I wanted to work outside of the country. And I had to really evaluate what I had at that time. All I had was a resume, literally. Like, all I had was a CV. And well, I knew I mean, that... CV contained, like, years of work, right? I mean, it contained years of work, but I knew that I needed more if I wanted to, you know, work for a, a work in a space, first of all, where I have no recognition. It's different in Nigeria because, I mean, there's, there's really Mm -hmm. People can say, oh, okay, instantly and relate to my like work because cover, exactly they even know the this. brand. Yeah. But then, you know, widening the scale, you need more, right? And at that time, I didn't have a portfolio, no documentation of my work whatsoever, nothing. I just had a resume. And I actually initially applied because, you know, I found a lot of like of vacancies online just by searching, mm -hmm. and I applied to a ton of them and got what tons sites of rejection. What did you use in searching? Um, so initially, I think I so initially I started by looking at companies that I knew about. Okay. So just international companies I knew about. Mm -hmm. I didn't even do any at that time. I had not started focusing my search, or I just wanted to put myself out there and see what would happen. And what happened was a shit ton of rejections. <laughs> That's what happened. So I, you know, I was like, oh, damn, this is hard. Um, so to be honest, the entire process took months, maybe around like even eight months or something. Because mm -hmm. That's a long time. I, it, yeah, it was, and it was not, it was also not something I was actively doing every single month. It was kind of like a thing where initially when I started, I, like I said, I applied to a bunch of stuff, got rejections, and I kind of just chilled. I like, stopped, yeah. The, the I was like, enough. yeah, the hell's are enough. I mean, we're living in a pandemic right now. Like, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to do this. Yeah. So I took a break, and in that break, you know, I started to have more conversations with people. Um, there was a friend that I had then who was a designer, and oh, she's a designer, and she had just landed a remote job as well with an international company. So, you know, I had a conversation with her to understand how she did it, and you know, she kept talking about her portfolio and going, going over all of that, and I was like, mm, this is really interesting. I mean, it makes sense as a designer, you have a portfolio. A lot of marketing people that I had talked to in the past never really had yeah, portfolios because it's, it's like is a thing exactly so I had to go about like first of all doing a lot of research to see like what kind of portfolio could like can I actually create mm -hmm. so my very first portfolio and the portfolio that ended up landing me this job is a Google Slides document precisely like it's just one that outlines the key responsibilities that I had and examples of my work so it's a lot more detailed than a resume so I spent a couple of months creating that really you know going back into the history of the work that I've done in my career and trying to find examples of my work, feedback from people. I really wanted to create a comprehensive document that would give you a good insight on exactly what I was doing or what I had done with my career. So I spent a couple of months just creating that. I mean, again, we're living through a pandemic, so <laughs> I was I was on and off. I'm just going to be honest about that. Um, but when the portfolio was done, this was around, this was in the new year. So this was definitely maybe around like four months or so before I got the job. Um, I started applying again and this time I was a bit more strategic about my applications and I also did a lot more research. I found websites like weworkremotely.com, um, there's lots of job sites to yeah. be honest, like there's tons of them. And I did not do anything special to find them, I literally just searched remote Most work job sites. Like it's, yeah, honestly. Yeah, there's no magic there. I didn't do anything crazy. So I found lots of them, and then I started getting interviews, and I was like, mm, interesting. So, you know, going through the process, let me just say that there were some of those interviews that really burned me. I still, I'm holding grudges till <laughs> now because I went to, I got to like the final stages of different companies and I got ghosted. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing. You just have to be resilient. Like this yeah. is not, it's not yeah. a process that, yeah. unfortunately, it's not. I mean, I feel like it's getting easier yeah. because I see stories every day of people landing international jobs and I'm really 
so happy for them. Yeah. I feel like it's getting easier. But at that time, you know, there were lots of things I didn't even understand. Like I would get to a certain stage in the process and then the company would stop replying. I'll ask for feedback. They won't respond to me. Um, so, and I also saw that I could tell that some of them preferred com um, people with local context of the work that they are doing as well. So that was feedback that I got a lot. But I was resilient because that's what I wanted. I wanted to work with an international company. I was tired of narrow life. <laughs> I wanted to enter the USD group chat. So I, so I told myself, like, this thing must happen. Um, so what you're saying is one of the key things that really made a difference in the process for you was that portfolio. Absolutely. And then looking for job sites to actually search for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I remember my very first remote role. It took me four months. So that yeah, it was it was a lot and well I, I knew the company that I applied so I applied to that company directly but before I got that one I don't like like yeah I got like a ton of rejections I was like I'm a superstar but like so these people don't have any idea and it was listen it, I feel like you just have chest. to you have to get used to the yeah, rejections I, was like, like, I feel like I'm doing good in my career and the fair, it was just the rejections were just coming yeah it was, it was mm. very interesting but like like just like you I, I checked for like a lot of job sites and one of the things that I think made a difference was understanding what people were looking for right mm, um, yeah so i would search i would read your jd i would read about the company read about the role i would get some interviews i would see what you're looking for and i began to really understand like what was in the market mm -hmm. and then i would then go back i was like the first work. set of rejection that like, yeah. you know i feel like i see a pattern mm. i want to go back and i revamped my entire cv put it in it because then it was still like mostly like digital marketing but i realized that growth was a fee I was already doing growth, but I wasn't communicating it. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This is it. So I went back and revamped my entire CV yeah. to reflect that I was doing good. Like, just mm -hmm. put the keywords, put examples of the growth thing I was looking for. Yeah. And then I started getting, like, really good signals. So that really helped. And then, of course, like Aisha said, there's, there was remote remotely. There's justremotes.com. There's, ah, there's indeed. Tons. Like, there's, tons. there's a lot. But also... Something else that I think I, I learned. There's LinkedIn. There's by LinkedIn. The way. Yeah, I'm, I actually have a LinkedIn example. But something else I learned is when I was checking like a lot of remote websites, I'm like, I, I got the sense that you will see a lot of like say I check we work, we work remotely and just remote. I will see the same company mm -hmm. as I'm like, oh, you know what? These guys have like they probably have they just have one session and just like feed into multiple sites, so they're probably getting like a ton, ton of, of applications. applications yeah. So I would then go to like the website, the the page. Of, that one is rookie, like it? rookie mistake to apply on those Do job sites. By the so, way, but if I if I see a company I like, I would like okay i'm not applying here mm -hmm. i'm gonna find their main career yeah page. absolutely sometimes i'll go to linkedin i'm gonna find a hiring manager and even send them a message ah you have to do leg work oh. exactly leg work there's yeah. leg work involved yeah because when i when i felt when i was working at sit stars i did the work well, i saw it on a random career, careers website and i went to sister's website i was like oh i know this company i did the application i got like sisters the process was like you mean to do application you get like an instant test or something mm -hmm. so i got the test and i saw that the person who sent me it was that no it wasn't the HR it was the hiring manager so I ran first and got a link to, to go and connect with him I did the test finished it I passed like a week passed no response I didn't do I didn't send an email I went to LinkedIn to go and send him like hey I got direct this email. message you will see it yeah he replied <laughs> me there he was like oh I'm so sorry that he got sick and something and then he went like few hours later I had gotten and that's what I kept doing I just if I, if I see that four days have passed one week has passed I'll just go you back follow to follow up like yeah this is how it was going so but, but sorry for hijacking it <laughs> <laughs> no 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 so, I, I think mean, we've talked about having a portfolio we talked about using like what I said um using the feedback, feedback that, that you're get getting to, to improve, improve yeah. yeah your process what else have you like encountered that you say this is an actionable tip we've also talked about following up mm -hmm. and stalking people on hmm. LinkedIn. actionable tips to be honest I think yeah Following up is a big one. It's a really, really big one. I think a lot of people don't follow up enough and ask enough questions, even for yeah. feedback when you yeah. get rejected. I think that that's it's super important. Not everybody will answer you, but people that there are people that actually take the time to answer you, and that would really help that you makes improve. A yeah. yeah, it makes a difference. Another thing that I I think also kind of helped me along the way was just 
the companies that I actually got interviews with and I went through the process was trying to just learn all the varying processes that exist in mm -hmm. the markets, right? Because lots of different companies have different processes, different kinds of questions, and it really helps you understand what they value as a company and also how to better position yourself as somebody that exhibits some of those values, mm -hmm. right? Not even necessarily for that company, but for the next company as well. Um, so that's something I think there's definitely things to be learned in from like the interview processes you may not end up getting the job, but you know you need to be attentive to see if there are any patterns questions. and ask them questions yeah. as well, yeah. right? But overall, I mean, rejections, 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 but then resilience wins. Resilience wins. Something else that I actually learned or that I, that I tried to do was to look out for companies that are not particular or particular about time zones, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's some companies that, for instance, you're in Nigeria and you're interviewing for a company in the US, you might literally end up getting to like stage three and like, oh man, yeah. Like, Girl, I have I a know. story. There, there was, there was this, there's this company, their digital bank. I am, I was absolutely so in love with them. I'm not going to name drop, but <laughs> I was so in love with them. Oh my God. And you know, I applied and they, you know, they, they asked me for an interview. That was like, I was screaming and jumping around. I was so excited. And then on the day of the interview, I got on the call and they were like, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We didn't realize you were in Nigeria. Um, sorry, it won't work. <laughs> and I'm like, so from that point onwards, honestly, I stopped waiting for people to tell me. When I apply and you invite me for an interview, I reply you with an email saying, oh, by the way, is this, you know, fully remote role? I'm currently in Nigeria, not, you know, like what are the specifics? Exactly. It also, at that point, you might even learn that the company is open to relocating and you can, you know, Start have that conversation if yeah. that's something you want. But initially, to be honest, when I got that job or when I got Wiseline, I wasn't looking to relocate when so I actually... how did relocate? should happen yeah um so they hired you as a nigerian living in nigeria working mm -hmm. remotely mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah so i joined wise in september 2021 um and Awesome, I was working from Nigeria. That was 2021 kind of- 2021 or 2020? 2020. Okay. I said 2021, I was, I was like, like <laughs> September 2020, sorry. Um, and I joined and I was working from Nigeria. It was really good. It was really exciting as well because I was working you know, in a different time zone. Well, I wasn't working in a different time zone mostly. I was actually working in Nigerian time zone, which was really cool because I would be working and everyone is sleeping and I just had hours to myself to yeah. really focus on my work and it was really nice. Um, but then, okay, October 2020 happened and answers was it was it was a lot that happened and then I had always kind of flirted with the idea of living outside Nigeria mm -hmm. but it was not something I was actively thinking about as of September when I accepted the offer from Wiseline and it was also not something I was actively thinking about for even 2020 or 2021 it was just like a it would happen I know it will happen way. because yeah. I did want to travel around that's something I've always flirted with and I've always imagined myself doing but October really triggered me because I felt like you know answers was a lot and I really wanted to take a break from Nigeria so at that time I started considering my options and what I was thinking about was there's a bunch of countries I don't know if you've heard of this you probably have there's a lot of countries that have like you know remote nomad digital nomad, nomad visas, visas yeah. right so for me at that time, that's what I was really considering. So I started making a list. There was Portugal, there was Spain, there were a bunch of places on the list. Mexico was actually on the list as well. Um, but when I did research into Mexico, I realized that for the digital nomad visa, you have to be working for a company that is not Mexican, mm. right? And I mean, my com the company I work for, WiseLine, is a Mexican company, but we also have offices, um, offices across the world. We're actually a global company, but they had an office in Mexico. So legally, I was, I was trying to, I was almost ruling Mexico out. Um, but I mean, NSAS was a global, global thing. Everybody, Everybody knew about did. it. Yeah. So I remember at that time, my manager had a conversation with me and she was like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And I was like, look, I'm feeling really stressed. I'm really anxious. I think it's time for me to take a break from Nigeria. That's something I'm really considering now. And she was like, oh, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I don't know. I've, I told her, like, I was just, you know, chatting with her and telling her places on my list. I was like, in fact, Mexico is actually on my list, too, but there's a whole legal thing. Because I didn't even, I don't know why, but at that point, I didn't even think about the possibility of the company sponsoring mm -hmm. the visa. And the company has an office. So it's Mexico. not fully remote, right? Yeah, 
there's there's people people can work from the office but yeah. my role was, was remote. fully remote you know i was employed as an independent contractor mm -hmm. working from nigeria so at that time it was not something i considered because i i mean i already had a whole independent contractor contract with the company mm -hmm. so adding relocation that was not something we ever discussed mm -hmm. so i was like Mm. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen or if it was going to even work. And she was like, yeah, I mean, she just literally, she was not a better. She was like, I feel like this is something we might be able to do. Let me talk to people up. And I kid you not, like a week later, they're scheduling immigration calls in my calendar and the whole process just starts. I remember one day in the middle of the entire process, I literally sat down and I was like, oh my God, I feel like I was joking. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on? Because literally, like, people are filling forms putting me on call, I'm like, can we slow down? <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, my manager took it really seriously because again, she was very worried about me and my mental health and how I was dealing with the situation. So at that time, she did everything that she, in her power to really fast track the process. And you know, we had a conversation with people ops and they were like, yeah, this is totally something we can do. And I moved to Mexico. Do you know if people ops took it up because of the answers, or they'll take it up because it's actually something that the company can do? I think it's it's because it's actually something the company can do. Because now that I think about it, like the company has several work work abroad programs. Like there's one that they did in the past, and they're actually starting to do again, where you have the opportunity to go and work from our Vietnam office for a year. Mm. So they've always had th that's always been an incentive for full time employees working from locations where the company has an office. Mm. Because you know the company has an office in the U.S has an office in Spain so all those so employees yeah there. can always you know move between global offices but as a contractor it was just not something I considered and that actually leads me to the question about getting people to relocate to you I really think it's just a game of asking yeah like you never yeah. really know until yeah. you ask right yeah. the worst anybody can Just do say, to you no. say, say yeah. no yeah. but you know opportunities there's tons of opportunities that you don't unlock unless you have the conversations about them yeah and that's so, so true I mean I think when that hit me I just I always felt like it was out of it <laughs> until just when I was about to move to London I think I just had my process so I changed my location on LinkedIn to London <laughs> girl it wasn't because of I can't remember why I did I just changed my location I'm like we are moving anywhere I might as well and I started getting an influx of recruiters. Yeah. I'm like, a. Eh? Mm -hmm. When I was looking for a job, nobody was answering. I was applying, nobody was answering. But the minute I changed my location on LinkedIn, it yeah. literally was like a flood. Till today, I probably get at least like two emails from a recruiter, like every other. I week. experimented with that as well, just randomly to see what that would look like. And it's true. The only thing with that is if you're, excuse me, in Nigeria and doing that, it might be a problem because the most of these companies or would recruiters that will you assume that you're yeah. in the but country and may not be open to the conversation of like remote work that's the or thing so that's where that's where i was actually going to the point because whenever i started these conversations with some of them the question they would typically be asked is you live in the uk do you have the work the right to work visa because i could probably just be a visitor mm -hmm. and if they don't some of them will be like oh we're open to sponsor some other others will be like we're asking because we can't sponsor mm. but like i never would have had that conversation in the first place, in the first place yeah. if like it was not if i was yeah. not on the radar mm -hmm. right so that's what I, what I was like really like at the end of the day it's mostly about conversation like mm -hmm. when you think about shooting your shot you can literally shoot your shot and then let them tell you oh no we don't relocate or let them say hey we don't we're looking for only fully remote people but you yeah. can't just entirely rule it out yeah there are no relocation uh, opportunities Offers, yeah and if you actually google i can't remember the sites now but like i've randomly checked right you see some sites that actually help people find relocation jobs. jobs yeah a lot of them are still very focused on like technical skills mm -hmm. but every now and again you find, you find like, a, one, one that, that marketing role exactly and yeah. sometimes what i used to do right when i was looking for a job at that time just before i moved to london i would i was checking for this site most of what they use see uh technical skills right but i now know the companies so i would then say oh you are able to relocate the software developer that's fine exactly and I then would go, go to their, their website, website and see if they are hiring for a marketing talent and then i want to apply and all of that i'm <laughs> looking for a job especially when you have specific demands like relocation or remote work it's a whole like it's a day you sit down and really put yeah, your mind plan. to it like exactly. you and it has to be something that you really want as well because like i said at that time for me 
I could have accepted something easier. It was, there were easier things, yeah. right? But I decided to stick it out because I knew what I wanted. Yeah. So it's, it's really a case of being resilient and knowing exactly what you want. And it even goes down to the role. Mm -hmm. I also knew the role I wanted to do next because because of the many rejections, I started feeling or getting derailed at a certain point mm. and I started looking at things that I knew I didn't really want. I had to also have that conversation with myself said, like, yes. this is not what we want. This is not what you want to do next. This is what you want to do next. So try to focus on that. So there's also all of that discipline that goes into it as well because yeah. when you're getting rejected, it's easier to feel like maybe it would be, I don't know, easier to settle for less or yeah. settle for something else that is maybe not as problematic as the one that you want. But, <laughs> Yeah, with Just, resilience at the end of the day. And yeah. I, I think what, one other story I have is, it was one company that I contracted for for about two or three months, but I was I was on LinkedIn randomly, mm -hmm. and I saw the CEO just tweet their hiring a digital marketing manager. And I'm like, oh, it's a very interesting company. I'm looking for like side lead right now. So I just sent him a DM. I took down his this thing, sent him as an email, and he just sent my CV. And he was like, oh my God, it was great. And, he, and then he, you know, said I should apply. And then he put me in contact with the CMO who was the hiring manager for the role. And all the conversation happened in one week. And I started working there in one week. And it was yeah. very interesting. But the things that stuck for me was one, I was the first ever Nigerian that they were hiring. They had never hired in Nigeria before they yeah. didn't think it was a thing everybody else was in the US so it wasn't it was a fully remote company yeah but they're just hiring people all over the US I think they had someone who had worked in maybe Cyprus or something but really it was mostly US mm -hmm. people so we're like oh I'm in Nigerian I'm in Nigerian they don't have they're not good, looking to relocate so we have yeah. to have that conversation and that thing was like even as a contract grow and I'm probably going to you know leave in a few months I also wanted just in case I like the rule I was able to negotiate a title because mm -hmm. I'm like oh the JD I give me is a senior JD but your title is a digital marketing manager mm -hmm. we're going to negotiate and that was in play so what I took from that experience was at the end of the day like regardless of how hard it is mm -hmm. or what um, job role you are looking for is your experience that still speak because we're still able like they had to go on a whole research on how to legally hire in Nigeria I had to do my research I had to find deal remote I said these are all the other options that I've used before spoke to their CEO had, like I was saying that this is how to hire me mm -hmm. legally yeah. and, and they were very open to that conversation yeah. mostly because like I'm really impressed with your background mm -hmm. and like your experience speaks for himself and we definitely want to have you here so like at the end of the day it might be really hard as a Nigerian but it's possible. working in the marketing industry. Mm -hmm. But like if you are resilient and you take all of these tips together and you have track record, like because that's the most important thing, right? Yeah. People just want to see that. Especially with remote roles, you do like you do need the experience. Yeah. You need because you need to give these people a reason to trust you and trust your work, right? And on that note of um, you know, being the first and so it just kind of <laughs> jolted my memory. So I was actually the second Nigerian ever to join WiseLine and possibly like the first Nigerian woman or first, if I think even first black woman to join the company. And you know, it was an, a really interesting position because the company has gone on to hire multiple Nigerians. Yeah, then, yeah. Right, like I see people join and I, you know, like I see an Obin and I'm like, ah, that's a Nigerian name now. So it's really cool. It's really cool because you, you know, when you enter these spaces, you find that, you know, you do good work and you are actually opening the door for more people because the company now feels a lot more comfortable exploring that space, yeah. right? So it opens up more opportunities for more people. I, th I feel like even, you know, the, the mere fact that a foreign company in a foreign space is hiring for a role like marketing that is very context filled, yeah, exactly. right? Like you need to you know, and context. hiring for, for that kind of role internationally. And people are seeing that, like, you know, the person is joining the company and they're excelling. Like, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's possible and it's doable. I think that also just opens the door for more opportunities like that in the ecosystem in general. Amazing. I think that we've done a good job, but if, if you if you take anything, or if you don't take anything else from this video, I think one of the things I wanted to just communicate is that it's possible. And like, there's no other way to say it. It's like, it's possible. Like, it's it doesn't matter how long you spent in the industry, how Nigerian you are, <laughs> what kind of companies you've worked for. You come from agency background. I know, I know someone 
who is a marketer too, mm -hmm. who has worked only in agencies in the last, so at least in, in his career in 2017, if I'm correct. So that's his five years only in agencies. Now he's doing a remote work for another agency. That's, that that's what I was even going to say. That exactly. The fact that his agencies doesn't stop you because, because if I mean, you still want to work with agencies, then yeah, agencies they're agencies abroad. Exactly. So you're good. So like, it really doesn't matter like the niche, whether it's only like, it's possible, right? Anybody who wants to, as long as it's hard because there's a lot of people might get lucky and their first try they'll get a role or in first month. Many people will take eight months. Maybe will take their four, first four months, right? My first one took me four months. The next one took me a week. My dear, <laughs> she get so. But like, look at her sharp shooter. Out. Hey, it will. It might take time and it might be hard. Yeah, but, but extremely possible. possible. That's what you just need to know. Yeah, and it's also possible that they will yeah. just relocate you and say, you know what? We don't want you stressing. We don't want you stressing anymore. Why do you want to move to Mexico? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go there. Anyway, no, that's, 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 that's my last word, right? It's, it's definitely possible. You just really need to try and also want it enough so that when yeah. the L's come, you yeah, are like, oh, yeah, it's one, two, 20, 30, girl. But I still know what I want and I'm going to keep going for it. Yeah. What are your final words? I mean, I feel like you've said it all, to be honest. Just keep at it. You two can do it, you know? Can. Can you can you See when you pray. Oh my god, yes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Like she said, it's honestly possible. Don't give up on the process. Don't give up on yourself. It's possible. It's very possible. And that one step is all you need to take. Once you've done it once, that's it. It gets way easier. Like she said, four months to one week. It only gets better, right? So just remember that. Amazing. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it made a lot of sense to you. I hope he gives you, it gives you the motivation you need to start hustling for that USD gig or GTP <laughs> gig. Like, just share for it. And anyway, yeah. thanks for watching this video. Make sure you don't leave this channel without subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace out. Oh, we did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.